What are pet allergies? Pet allergies occur when a person develops an immune reaction to animal dander, skin flakes, saliva, urine, or feces. Animal fur or hair itself isn't much of an allergen, but it can trap pollen, dust and mold, which can all be allergens. When a child with pet allergies breathes in dander or comes in contact with saliva or droppings, his immune system goes on alert and releases histamine and over 40 other chemicals designed to fight off the allergen, prompting symptoms such as sneezing and watery eyes. Any animal with fur or feathers, including dogs, hamsters, guinea pigs, birds, and especially cats, can cause a reaction in a child who is allergic. Even hairless or short-haired dogs and cats can cause allergies. However, some children with pet allergies are more allergic to certain breeds or even individual animals. Pet allergy symptoms in babies and children Common signs and symptoms of pet allergies include Runny nose itchy Watery eyes sneezing symptoms such as coughing or wheezing itchy skin raised Red patches on the skin hives When do pet allergies show up in babies and children? Pet allergies can develop at nearly any age, but they typically don't cause symptoms prior to two years of life. A common cause of congestion and sneezing in newborn babies is actually lint particles from new clothes and bedding. Nasal saline, gentle bulb suction, and washing all of your baby's new materials may help. What are the chances my baby will be allergic to my dog or cat? Anyone can develop a pet allergy. However, your child is more at risk for developing a pet allergy if she has a strong family history of allergies or asthma has other allergies or allergy-related diseases such as asthma or eczema. How can I tell whether my child is allergic to our pet? Your child may be allergic to the family pet if her allergy symptoms are year-round, as opposed to seasonal. Although this could also be a sign of an allergy to dust mites, cockroaches, or mold. Your child's symptoms ease after she's been away from home, and your pet, for an extended period, such as a family vacation. Your child's symptoms get worse when she's playing or snuggling with the family pet. Advertisement page continues below. It can be hard to figure out whether or not your pet is responsible for your child's allergies. Removing your dog or cat from the house for a test period won't tell you much, since there will likely be enough pet dander in your home to trigger your child's allergies even when your pet isn't around. Even after leaving home without your pet, your baby may still have a reaction because chronic exposure and symptoms, once triggered, can occur for days after the exposure is removed, according to allergist James L. Sublett, past president of the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology ACAAI. Allergens will likely be transported to the new environment on clothing and other items, he said. You may need to take your child to an allergist to find out for certain whether or not your pet is causing the allergy symptoms. Diagnosing pet allergies in babies and children to determine allergy triggers, your child's doctor will likely ask about your child's symptoms. Examine your child's nose and throat to look for inflammation. Refer your child to an allergist for allergy testing. An allergist may perform the following tests. Skin prick testing involves pricking the surface of the skin with a small amount of liquid allergen. After 15 to 20 minutes, the allergist looks for bumps or welts, like small mosquito bites, that indicate an allergic response. This is the number one choice for initial allergy testing. Serum testing involves a blood draw to measure the body's antibody levels for specific allergens. It is not as accurate as skin prick testing, but it is the preferred method for children with certain skin problems or who take certain allergy medications on a regular basis. What's the best way to treat pet allergies in children? In general, the best way to avoid allergy symptoms is to avoid the allergen itself. When your child's allergy is severe, your family might consider removing the pet from the home. If your pet is already an important member of the family, other options are available. If you do decide to remove your pet from your home, you'll need to do a very thorough cleaning to get rid of the pet particles left behind. This includes cleaning, or even removing, carpets, sofas, curtains and bedding. Even then, it can take months for allergen levels in your home to drop low enough to make a difference. 
If you decide to keep your pet, or if your child's allergy symptoms continue even after the pet is gone, your doctor may recommend medications. These include saline nasal rinse. This may be enough if your child has only a mild reaction to pets, antihistamines and other allergy medicines. Your child's doctor or allergist may recommend these for more severe symptoms. Allergy shots. These may be a good option if your child is older and has symptoms even after you've removed the offending pet and tried allergy medications. Allergy shots contain a tiny amount of purified allergen and are given over time to gradually build up your child's immunity. There is no minimum age requirement for allergy shots. You'll want to take him to a board-certified allergist who can evaluate his condition and decide whether or not shots are the best option. Other ways to manage your child's pet allergies Having an animal in the home can provide physical and emotional benefits to your child that outweigh the problems that allergies cause. If you decide to keep your pet, here are some strategies to help keep your child's allergies at bay. Keep your pet out of your child's bedroom. Keep the door closed and the room clean. It's best to restrict your pet to only a few rooms in the house, preferably uncarpeted areas like the kitchen. Consider removing carpets. These can trap allergens for up to six months. Replace carpets with smooth flooring such as linoleum or hardwood, at least in your child's bedroom. Clean your home thoroughly, especially your child's room. Furniture, carpets, drapes, and even walls can trap pet dander. Consider removing heavy drapes and scaling back on the stuffed animal collection. Wash bedding once a week in water that's at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Encase the mattress and pillows in an allergen-proof covering. Filter the air. Consider installing filters designed to reduce allergen circulation on heating and air conditioning vents in your home, or covering them with a dense filtering material like cheesecloth. You can also run portable high-efficiency particulate air HEPA, purifiers in your child's bedroom or other areas of the house to reduce allergen levels. Use a vacuum cleaner with a HEPA filter. This will trap not only animal dander but also dust mites and cockroach droppings. Keep in mind that it takes nearly two hours for particles stirred up by cleaning to settle back down. Keep your pets off the furniture. Nothing traps animal dander like upholstery. If this is impossible, or if your dog or cat has a favorite spot that you don't have the heart to declare off-limits, try covering that chair or sofa with a removable cloth that you can wash easily. Change your child's clothes after he plays with your pet. If you can't wash his clothes right then, put them in a separate hamper. Wash his hands right away. In fact, give him a bath if you can. If not, Make sure he gets a bath at night and wash his hair before going to bed. You don't want him tracking allergens into his bedroom. Reduce close contact. Encourage your child to avoid hugging, petting or kissing the pets that trigger his allergies. Bathe and groom your pet frequently. Twice weekly baths can help reduce the levels of dander in your pet's fur. Consult a veterinarian or other animal care professional for safe pet bathing instructions and shampoo recommendations. Have someone without pet allergies groom your pet frequently outside of your home. Can I prevent my child from developing a pet allergy? Possibly. Research suggests that exposure to animals in the first year of life may reduce children's risk of developing allergies in general. In fact, the more pets that a child is exposed to as a baby, the less likely she is to have allergies later on, according to a recent study. That said, the evidence isn't strong enough to recommend either buying a new pet or removing an existing pet from your home for the sole purpose of preventing allergies in your newborn baby. There are no known ways to guarantee pet allergy prevention. If you or your partner have allergies, your child may be genetically predisposed to eventually develop some sort of allergy no matter what precautions you take. Keep in mind that if you do have a pet, your child may not show allergic signs right away. It can take months to years of exposure before a child develops allergic symptoms in response to a new or existing pet. Are any pets less allergenic than others? Some allergists and veterinarians say yes, others disagree. Almost all animals carry allergens, 
so there is no such thing as an allergy-free cat or dog. Here's what we know about different animals. Dogs. There doesn't seem to be any solid evidence that some breeds of dogs are more or less allergenic than others. However, some people with pet allergies find they are more sensitive to certain breeds. Many people mistakenly believe that short-haired dogs like poodles are less allergenic than long-haired breeds. However, it's the animal's dander, not the hair or fur itself, that causes the allergic reaction. With that being said, a long-haired dog is more likely to accumulate other allergens such as pollen and dust. Cats. There is general agreement that cats are about equally allergenic no matter what their breed. Their allergens are harder to escape than dog allergens, cat dander is smaller and stickier than dog dander, which means it can travel airborne for great distances and stick to a surface for a longer time. Since cats are always licking their fur, a child has a good chance of coming into contact with dog saliva, another common allergen. Hamsters, gerbils, and other rodents. These are also not recommended as pets for allergic children. When caged, these animals can't really avoid stepping in their own urine or feces, which can cause a reaction when they come in contact with a child's skin. Reptiles and amphibians. These are unlikely to cause an allergic reaction. However, reptiles and amphibians such as turtles and frogs can carry salmonella, a type of bacteria that can cause serious diarrhea and dehydration. For this reason, these animals are not recommended for children under age 5. If you do opt for a reptile, follow these safety tips. Wash your hands after touching the animal. Never kiss the pet. Prepare your own food away from the pet. Keep the animal in a cage or tank, away from the kitchen or dining room. An adult should clean the cage daily. Birds. This is an option for children allergic to other pets, although some kids may be allergic to bird feathers. Fish. Tropical fish are a great alternative pet for children allergic to other types of animals. Just be careful with large aquariums, which can add humidity to your home, resulting in mold and dust mites. Can children outgrow pet allergies? Yes, there are reports of children who become tolerant or outgrow their pet allergies over time. Studies have shown that high-level exposure to pet allergens can occasionally flip the immune system to eliminate a child's allergic response. This does not happen for everyone, and the chances of your child outgrowing his pet allergy are unknown. It may be reasonable to wait and see if tolerance develops, as long as your child isn't having severe allergy symptoms or difficulties controlling her asthma. Interestingly, Immune tolerance may disappear if the allergen pet is removed from the child's everyday environment. For example, a teenager may develop a tolerance, go off to college, and come back home several months later only to notice that the family dog now triggers allergy symptoms once again.